Hello everyone! As promised, I do have one more video clip to do on this 911 jaw crusher that Dave from 911 gave me. Today what I am going to do is I am going to run through some rocks that should be vicious to crush. All sorts of things that should be very, very tough. I've got some gold ore here from a quartz vein that is really tough quartz. I've got some copper ore beside it from, uh, it's got all sorts of calcopyrite and stuff. Again, really hard rock. I've got some river slicks here, really hard quartz. Some different river slicks. I've got some core samples that are fairly dense from a mine close by here. And I've got the most vicious little agate you can imagine. I'm going to run those to the crusher today and see how it deals with hard rocks. These should be very difficult to crush. Let's see if the little machine can handle it. As I was saying the other day, this machine is designed that if it ever does jam up and fail, it's going to fail at that nut right there. The welds are small on it, designed for the nut to pop off, rather than something internal break. That being said, I don't imagine that will break off. I think before that happens, my motor will stall out. The belts are tight, so I don't, the belt, don't think the belts will slip, but the mortar should stall before anything breaks. However, as I said, it is designed to fail right there, if it does fail at all. Let's see what it does with these crazy hard rocks. Now one thing I will mention before I get going here, I've had a lot of comments about people saying that I should be wearing a dust mask, and they're right, I should be. I really should be. I happen to live in a very breezy area here, and every time I have been crushing, there has been a fairly significant breeze blowing one way, and I'm making sure that all the dust is going that way, so I'm not breathing it in, because rock dust is really hard on you. I also plan to mitigate the dust a little bit by doing some modifications to this and putting a cloth shroud around the bottom so anything falling through isn't blowing dust away. I haven't got that far yet. Uh, after I've done some crushing here, I'll show you some of the other modifications I would do to this system. Let's see what this thing can do. jammed it. Let's try it again.
think it can handle this. This is a full core sample. We'll try. So the full-size big core sample did jam it up there, although when I ran it the second time, it was okay to take it through. You could hear the motor was struggling even that second time, though. So it, we, found part, we found one limitation here. The motor couldn't quite do that big core sample. The nut's looking fine. I keep adjusting its uh, jaws just to put the stuff through quickly once I know it's going to crush it. These next three pieces, I don't know if it's going to be able to do it, but let's give it a shot. Okay, this here is an agate. Now, agate is one of the hardest, well, not densest, but yeah, very dense. One of the hardest, toughest forms of quartz there is. And a nice agate nodule like this, very, very difficult. Let's see what it does with it.
doing that test, I am very glad I had my eye protection on as multiple chunks of that rock jumped out and nailed me in the face. See some of the... I had the jaws fairly wide apart just so it would go through it quickly. See some of the chunks of core sample, obviously all that tough, tough quartz. That agate, that agate just chewed through that agate like it wasn't even there. An agate is tough stuff. Well, not bad. I won't check any of that even for gold. None of that stuff has gold in it. Even that gold ore sample, that site has never shown me anything. Okay, so the one chunk of copper ore jammed it as it fell down quickly into the jaws and just instant stop. But it was easy to unplug the machine, back it off, pull it out, and the second time through, it was no problem. The big core sample, it had a problem with. It broke it up, it chewed it up a little bit, but then as the heavier and heavier pieces sort of fell down into the jaws, it just overwhelmed the motor. The motor could not keep up. Second time through, once I freed it all up, I um, put it through and you could hear the motor was just on the verge of not being able to do it. However, the welds never broke. The machine itself took it, took it like a boss. No problem at all. Those um, quartz, those quartz slicks from the River Run Quartz there, they exploded when you put them in. Jumped right back out at me. So maybe I should talk about things that I would do to modify this now. First thing is, I really need an electric switch on this. So I don't have to plug and unplug. So if I mounted up a nice switch right there, so I can flick it on and off, obviously, that's a must. I would like a cloth shroud that comes down over my bucket so that any dust coming out of the bottom here doesn't blow around and so a lot of these chips don't fall out at the bottom, although most of these chips are coming out the top. Yeah, that being said, um, I'd also wouldn't mind doing something at the top here to keep the rocks from, from jumping out. If I took like a broom type material with fingers on it that would easily bend away when the rocks went in, but then bounce back, it might keep a lot of the stuff from jumping back out here. So I may design some sort of shroud at the top here that allows things to go in, but not necessarily back out. I would like on mine, definitely, to seal, let's see if I get a shot of it, seal this joint right here. You can see that little rock that's in there. When I fill up the hopper with the fine, fine material too high, I get a little bit of dust and stuff falling through that on the outside. There's also a joint back here that's the same. So, you just a little bit of sealant in there would deal with that, no problem. Another thing I would like to do on mine is extend this plate here down inside the jaws just a little bit. Not enough that it interferes with the motion, but enough to keep the material that goes down in from going back up underneath it and then falling on top here. Because I was noticing when I was overloading the machine, which I tend to do, uh, I tend to overdo things, I had material coming back out the top here and falling down on the outside. So there's something I would like to do. Seal that joint and extend this. And I think I could even just do that with a piece of like duct tape or something, just to keep the material falling down in and not pushing this the way back over the top. I would also put a wing nut on here so I can adjust that easier. So I'm not just grabbing it by hand, but with a wing nut, a wing nut on there for adjustment, and a locking nut. So a second nut not welded on, just on the threads, so that when I get the perfect position, I can just lock it in place. And probably another wing nut. So I could just lock it in place and those jaws won't move on me. Now, I happen to know that even before I publish this to YouTube, I'm sending this off to the manufacturer, and those little suggestions I just uh, said, what I would like to see, I have a feeling he's going to uh, take them to heart really quickly. In fact, I can see 
even right after this that anything coming out will have a lock nut on it. And the next ones will probably have this as a wing nut. Because those are just easy, easy fixes. Well, I am very impressed with this machine. It's doing what I want it to do and doing it quicker than I expected. And I've even found some gold that I was not expecting to find through crushing some ores on this machine. So I am very happy with it so far. The people at 911 Metallurgists have made a very nice machine here. And they're awesome people to deal with too. Uh, Dave has been great. He's just sent me out a um, melting and smelting furnace so we can do some smelting. And I'm going to do a whole video series on that. And after talking with him the other day on the phone, he told me to tell my YouTube uh, subscribers that if they call him up and say they saw this video on YouTube and want one of these machines, or any of the crushers, he will give you a smoking hot deal. So take him up on that. If you want a crusher, call Dave and see what he can do for you. Well guys, that's the last actual review video I'm going to do on this crusher, although I am definitely going to be using it in my other videos. Uh, I've got lots of stuff I want to do with it now. And my next uh, series of videos is all going to be on melting and smelting gold. And I'm going to be using this crusher here to crush down the ores to concentrate them for smelting. So it's definitely going to be useful into the future. Hope it was enjoyable for you to watch and informational, informational, inform, informative, informative, sure. And if you are looking for a crusher, please call Dave at 911 Metallurgist. Well, until the next video. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please click the subscribe button below. That little picture of me. And here's a couple more videos on the topic that you also might enjoy. Thank you for watching my videos. Have a great day. Bye.